There were some delightful relatives I connected to while a youngster. One of them was my grandmother's sister's husband. His name was Uncle Shirley. I remember as a child, I would visit and I would ask, how are you, Uncle Shirley? And he would answer, well, it's the same old seven and six. I never knew what that meant until years later. The expression, same old seven and six, it originated in England during the 19th century. It was a common reply in response to an inquiry about the health or affairs of a person, such as what many of us would use today, like how are things or how are you doing? The same old seven and six, it referred to the prevailing weekly wage among workers in England at the time it was seven shillings and a six pence. And it implies that things have gone as usual with nothing extraordinary. Nothing extraordinary has occurred. Business as usual. It's where I think most people are, are really comfortable However, there are some other options. For the antithesis of the old seven and six, it would be, hey, that's a game changer. A game changer is really kind of a new introduced element or factor that changes an existing situation or an activity in a very significant way. Here are some game changers. The personal computer, the internet, smartphones, electricity, the automobile, and even outer space exploration, like the recent launch of SpaceX, which was the first commercial rocket launch provider. And they all have their individuals associated with them. There's Alexander Bell, Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, Steve Jobs, and Elon Musk. And a game changer can be positive or negative or both like the brutal death of George Floyd, was a tragic negative, and yet it is stimulating a national discussion on race and the need for change. Well, let me ask, what was the most significant game changer of all time? The most significant game changer of all time was the cross. And Jesus was that ultimate game changer. History was divided by this change. The game changed from B.C. to A.D., before Christ to Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. The game changer that all people matter to God. Wow, what a game changer. For God so loved the world, he gave his son. The world, not just the already convinced believers within the walls of the church. Law was changed to grace, hate to love, and death to life. Jesus changed the game of life. Peter, preaching at Pentecost, changed the game. The apostle Paul changed the game when he declared Though I am free and belong to no one, I made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. Now, the Apostle Paul has some hard teachings for those of us who want to be game-changing followers of Christ. In his correspondence to the Christian church in Corinth, Paul reveals his self-imposed parameters of personal rights and freedom. He essentially says, I will become all things to all people for the sake of the gospel. Now, why would he choose to do this? He did it to build unity in the body of Christ. It was not about him, but about others that drove his ethics. That's being a game changer. I think Paul would do anything he could so that there would not be a stumbling block in the way of the gospel being realized and the unity of his community. He became all things to all people. He limited his freedom for the sake of others. Now, consider this when you are re-engaging in a world trying to recover 
from our difficult times. Will you become all things as the Apostle Paul did? To show the gracious love of God and through your actions to direct others to Jesus? We were not born to just suck air. We were born to know God and to make God known. And now it's our time to throw the game-changing dice. What you decide to do through the local church does make a difference. Now, for those who are part of the Fox River community, here are some opportunities. It's time for each of us to begin asking the question, what ministry team can I be a game changer in? The service team, the worship team, the evangelism team, the discipleship team, the fellowship team, or, or is it a support team like the administrative or accountability teams? Or perhaps serving as an officer, as a lay leader, or treasurer, or clerk. There is that story I always think about when a church is getting ready for its annual elections. About four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was that important job to be done, and everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure somebody would do it. Now, anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, it ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. Be the somebody. We are called to be game changers by continuing the reach of Jesus, caring for the dying, being a friend to the person who is lonely, assisting that person who needs some special help. You are called to be a game changer by remembering the grieving in prayer. You're called to be a game changer by making sure your neighbor has some food to eat. You are called to be a game changer by telling others about the love of Jesus and inviting them to church. Jesus put it this way. He said, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these. Perhaps you've heard the story of the, the starfish. I love the story. Well, walking along a beach, there was an elderly gentleman, and he saw someone in the distance picking up and throwing something into the ocean. As he got closer, he noticed a young boy picking up starfish one by one and tossing each one gently back into the water. He came closer still and called out, Good morning. May I ask what it is you're doing? Well, the young man paused and he looked up and he replied, Well, I'm throwing starfish into the ocean. The old man smiled and said, Well, I must ask them, why, why are you throwing starfish into the ocean? And to this, the young man replied, well, the sun is up. The tide is going out. And if I don't throw them in, they will die. To which the elderly observer commented, but young man, do you not realize that there are miles and miles of beach and there are starfish all along every mile? You can't possibly make a difference. Well, the young man listened. And they politely he bent down and he picked up another starfish and he threw it back into the ocean beyond the breaking waves and he said, it made a difference for that one. Will you make a difference for that one? Will you make a difference for Christ and his church? Be a change maker and may God bless you as you make a difference. Amen.